International are running a campaign to end the execution of juvenile offenders across the globe, and your help can really make a difference. Amnesty International opposed the death penalty because it is in violation of two fundamental human rights, as laid down in Article Human rights campaigns can stimulate the passion of children, the right and there's a big opportunity for teachers to enrich lessons by introducing these issues across the curriculum. <laughs> School's over for the girls of Bryn Havran Comprehensive in Barry, South Wales. But for the weekly Amnesty group, there's serious work still to be done. I would like it if everybody could take one of the small leaflets home with them this evening so that if you are asked any questions by people out in the street, you know what your answers are going to be. The group was set up last year by Naomi Howes. How does it feel in those? Imagine if you were locked in a cell for 24 hours a day with maybe one of these on, with nobody to talk to and no... Um, Assisted by drama teacher John Coombs, she's helping the girls plan a demonstration against the absence of fair trials for detainees at Guantanamo Bay. There's not that much in Barry that shows all the international stuff. There's not that many groups that go around showing stuff like that, so they should, a few people should be interested. What do you think it makes people feel like if they're all dressed the same? Good. Like, like not as individuals. Good, not, not as individuals. Paige has got a good point. The reason that these suits are orange, Paige believes, is... Because orange is a colour that makes people unhappy and fight and angry and upset. Makes them aggressive and upset. Across Britain, there are nearly 600 amnesty youth groups campaigning against torture and in support of prisoners of conscience around the world. Remember, you have to be polite and you have to make sure that what you're writing is correct. You can't just make claims that aren't true. I am writing to ask you if you could please change. Is that to realise that they're not just girls in a small town in Wales, they're actually people of the world and their voices make a difference and their voices matter. I don't know whether it's something to do with the area that they come from, it probably is, but they have a very strong sense of social injustice. They've written some very expressive pieces about violence against women, but everything now appeals to them. It's not just gender specific. They've become so involved that every urgent action that is necessary they will take on board and run with. They've received replies from governments, from Tony Blair and from the Welsh Assembly. And to have those replies to these girls is such a huge thing. Woke up early this morning. Love me now. I got out my bed early this morning. Right, take a seat, everybody, please. Thank you. Naomi teaches English and music. Hope I'd like you to lie down there, please. And this morning, she's taking a year eight lesson on the Naomi, blues. Keep your head there by your Hope's feet. I hope they're not smelly. <laughs> she's found that bringing human rights into lessons uh, can inspire the pupils. Nice and close to your touch here. In year eight, we look at the music of Asia, music of Africa, music of our country, music of South America. And within that, there's always a story to tell that is human rights related. There's always a history of the people, history of how their music came to be. You are on a boat. You have been taken from your families, from your homes. You've been thrown onto this ship and you've been forced to lie exactly like this. And this is how you're going to stay for the next few weeks. I'd like you to get up carefully and go back and sit at your Naomi places. plans to get the students to channel their feelings about slavery into a blues song. Now, can you all just close your eyes a second, please? I'd like you to imagine now what it must have been like to have been stolen from your family and taken to a country you've never even heard of and forced to work in the fields. Long hours, no money, no breaks, hardly any food, how must that have made people feel? Right, open your eyes. Now, in groups, I'd like you to start constructing your own blues song, remembering all that you've learnt about the slaves. And whilst you're working, I'll be playing some blues music in the background to give you some inspiration. <laughs> Yeah. 
the days are very long. Sing yeah. this song and sing, sing this song. Something, something, something. The days are so long. Um, singing is all I've got to get me through the day. Yeah. I think people are ill, dying around us. Of hunger. I'm packed on a show. Yeah. Dying of hunger. So. I'd like somebody to tell me what they think the most important lesson they've learnt about today has been. Raja? Everyone's equal. Everyone is equal. Neve? Um, treat people how you would like to be treated. Treat people how you would like to be treated. And Hannah? No one's better or worse than you. Good. Nobody is better than you and nobody is worse than you. We're all equal. In the Welsh curriculum, Human rights is taught as part of personal and social education. But last term, Naomi organised a Human Rights Week across the curriculum to coincide with Amnesty's annual Protect the Human campaign. I came up with lesson plans for the various subjects and luckily Amnesty supply quite a lot of lesson plans for various subjects which we were able to use. I suppose the ones that lent themselves to human rights most easily were English history, geography, you know, the basic ones you would think of. Drama wasn't too difficult to think of. Dance, they were able to do something. But the ones that were more, took more deliberation were maths, science. Luckily, I had some help from the science department because I'm rubbish at science. But they decided that they would look at the way science has been used to torture people, so acids and gases that have been used sensory deprivation, electrocution. <laughs> oh my god, I feel bad. Oh, no one here. No one here. Oh, I like that. The experience has stimulated staff to experiment with human rights, to add flavour and focus to lessons. Today, Anthony Bebb is teaching a year nine science class on the life of Galileo. Aristotle said, the Earth stays still, and we see the sun and the stars move around the sky because they're going around us. When Galileo came along, he invented the telescope, and he noticed that planets had moons going around them. So if things can go around planets, OK, then perhaps not everything is going around the Earth. So he wrote a book about it. And what happened to his book? Lauren? He wasn't able to write, and it got taken off him. OK, yeah, his book was banned. Why? Because he had his own opinion. He had his own opinion, good. And what did his opinion go against? The Catholic beliefs. The Catholic beliefs. The Catholics believed that the Earth was the centre of the solar system and that was fact, OK? And anybody that went against it would be put on trial, as if you committed a crime. What's your initial thoughts on that? And it's not fair because everyone should have their own opinion. Everyone should have their own opinion and, yeah. and, and be able to express it, do you think? Yeah. He should be able to tell other people? Yeah, and if he wants to write the book of his opinion, he can. He should say article... One the pupils are then set a task to relate Galileo's persecution to the UN Declaration of Human Rights. Now, what I want you to do is have a look at those articles and try and highlight, if you've got a highlighter or underline, the ones that you think were broken or violated in the case of Galileo. Everyone has a right to freedom of thought. Freedom that one. Of Definitely. That, 18. That. Conscience and religion. I think it's important to give it a go. I, I think you have to it. make your lessons, you know, in a way controversial and, and a bit risky for the pupils to get involved. I mean, far too many science lessons are sedate and are boring and have got no focus. And, and they're done just to get the uh, curriculum across and, and, and to meet deadlines. Whereas if you put a story behind it and if you make it applicable to what's happening in the world, I think the pupils are far more likely to get switched on to it. The girls learn Welsh, Spanish and French. And the head of languages has found introducing human rights can energise lessons. Because they were so um, riled up by seeing a picture of someone tortured, they really, really wanted to give their opinions. So cross curriculars is superb in opening up people's minds and giving them the realisation that by using a language you can express yourself about anything in the whole world.
it's, it's like a big buzz in the classroom and everyone's just wants to put their hands up, which is hard in language because it can be quite intimidating to say something in a different language because you don't want to make a mistake. But because they're so carried away and so intent on giving their own opinions, they don't really care if they make a mistake, which is great for us because for us as teachers, we want them to communicate. Human rights are also covered in form periods during the theme of the week. It's a whole school approach supported by the head, who's careful to avoid the pitfalls. We've made sure that children have opportunities to investigate and reflect and to think for themselves, opportunities to discuss. It would be totally inappropriate for us to indoctrinate views, political or of, of a moral viewpoint. That's not what we're here for. We're here to allow children to think for themselves, to open their eyes to what's going on in the world and for them to come to a balanced value judgment. He's also found that one-off events have their limitations. The lesson I would certainly share with colleagues is that if you're going to try and drive any issues to do with human rights or any other key issues that you want to deliver through citizenship, it's a coordinated programme of events over a week, over two weeks, and gradually allow that to build in. But the message is consistent. And that is, you know, in this particular case, about the value of human life. Meanwhile, the Amnesty Group has hit town. What we're not doing is causing a riot, OK? Go and get them, then. Go. Go. Girls, go. Um, we need two people with clipboards over that side and two people with clipboards down there. Um, basically, people are being held captive um, and being tortured and that and without any, permit, without any evidence that they've done anything wrong. They've just been put there because that's what they suspect they took. They're terrorists. Sign my name as well, then. Mm, don't do it yourself. The pupils can also learn some surprising lessons from taking part. Yeah, and they all get locked up and tortured and beaten. And burned with cigarettes. And we, some of them. Something I would say to you, okay? Do we chop their heads off? Because that's what they've been doing to our people when they've been caught. They've been chopping their heads off. And that's not nice, is it, either? When he was, when he was signing, he was like, I'm not signing my life away or anything, am I? I'm just like, no. He said, oh, well, they deserve it all. And then we gave this one woman a leaflet and she started walking away, going, we'll come back when we've read it. It's good to see the girls explaining to people in their own words what they think is happening. And it's nice that overhearing girls saying, well, it doesn't really matter what these people have done. Obviously, people that have done wrong need to be imprisoned or punished, but nobody deserves to be tortured. Basically, people are being held Sorry? captive. People are being held captive in Guantanamo Bay. They, no, they think they're terrorists, but they haven't got any evidence that oh, they're terrorists. Oh, I'm not worried about them. They're all terrorists. They're not, though. No, they they say they're not. They're getting tortured for something, and they might not even be terrorists. They might be innocent people. Look at this, right? He's got a cover over his head so that he's been beaten, battered and everything. That's a fix-up, that is. That's not a fix-up. It is a fix-up. I think some of the members of the public are a little bit aggressive, but that's OK. The girls have managed it very maturely, so I'm pleased. They're learning how to deal with people who maybe don't agree with what they say in a, you know, diplomatic and mature fashion.